going to hear about the film. We're going to hear from James Bowen about whom the film is made and the man who plays him in the film, Luke Treadaway, after this clip. He needs a vet. Well, it sounds expensive. Can you put a price on that? Oh, no, no, he's not my cat. I mean, I just found him. I think it's like a stray or... I don't know. <laughs> he is telling me he was put here to be with you. Reading his spirit loud and clear. He came to you for a reason. Really? You're, 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 you're sensing that? Of course not. What do I look like? Some kind of nut? There's a card there for the vet that I volunteer at. It's a charity. Tell them Betty sent you. Okay, thanks. Um, you should go. Bacteria is multiplying by the second, and Bob needs a vet. Bob? That's what he told me he wants you to call him. He's not actually my cat, you know. <sighs> Mine, yours. We all belong to each other. See you, Bob! It's nice to meet you. You're a bit of an attention hog. Do you know that, Bob? Well, because he kept following me around, I um, I was sort of barely existing at that point, being on benefits, being on a methadone program. And when he kept following me around, and I don't really have a choice in the matter because he's a cat, cats do what they want to. And when he jumped on that bus that day, it was like, well, I better buckle up my ideas. And it sort of, at the same time, gave me a joyous experience because people were all of a sudden, you know, talking to us and engaging us. And... Um, he kind of gave me that reason to, you know, have a second second go at, you know, sorting my life out. And, you know, here we are today. It's crazy. I mean, it started really when James first came over, came over to my house before the filming started and he brought Bob Brown and we had a little, you know, introductory hello. Um, and then, you know, and then more and more as it went on, Bob, I think, became quite used to the fact that there was this other guy uh, that he was going to have to sort of sit on the shoulders of for a bit of the day. And he seemed cool with it. And, and when when he'd first go on in the morning, um, James would, would, would sort of take us and we'd go for a little walk. So that just so he'd get used to sitting on my shoulders and find his balance and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was cool. Actor Luke Trudaway and the man who he plays in the film James Bowen. This is a street cat named Bob. I mean, it must be pretty cool to have a film made about you, wouldn't it? Yeah, when, especially if you're a cat. When they're going to make a film about us, like what we've achieved, we've done so, we've done it would so be, much. It would be an epic that would only match Napoleon. It would just be like 20 hours of me revving. So <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> and us making noises, yeah. and us Kafar reacting and to things. Just going, yeah, and uh, <laughs> opening Blu-rays. When it comes to the Oscars, <laughs> and the show, like, you know, the, the, the for your consideration bit, it would be me doing the Jurassic Park scream. Yeah. Who would get, who would get the, like... Like that. <laughs> but, like, more epic. Because I'd be played by, um, Would be the first ever duo. Well, be, the first ever trio to get Best Actor. Yeah. I'd be played by Jude Law. But we'll talk about that later. Jude Law? Uh, oh. What about, what about you, Joe? Who do you I wouldn't really. It's uh, just the first, first thing we get made. I, I think, I think Daniel Michael Penner for you. Or Emilio West of us. Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Daniel Day Fair enough. He's a chameleon, after all. It's true. Um, I would be played by, I don't know. Mm, well, like, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt? Yeah, Chris Pratt. Why fair not? Enough. He's adaptable. Yeah, right. Fair enough. Uh, a street cat named Bob. <laughs> nice little diversion, that, but this yeah. is, what's the film about? Uh, well, The Street Cat Named Bob is a true to life story. I think it's a street cat named Bob, not the street cat uh, named Bob. Well, a street cat named Bob. <laughs> is a true to life story about a, a man who's come from Australia called James Bowen, and he is a busker who plays on the streets in Camden, I'm sorry, yeah, Covent Garden, and basically he is very hard on his luck. Uh, he's on the he's on the recovery programme for heroin addicts, so he's on uh, methadone, and he comes across one day a cat who just turns up in his apartment and that cat follows him onto a bus and the next day when he goes to bus and they strike up a friendship which ends up helping him sort of help recover his from his heroin addiction and sort of they become best pals as you do because cats are adorable sort of yeah it's sort, uh, it's sort of the new basically yeah come on then so yeah keep going it's, yeah, it's, it's about cats yes it's about cats and a man's friendship with a cat now i mean i know we've already spoken about this off the air but um it is it's sort of it, it, the same sort of way Eddie the Eagle had no right to be as life affirming and as charming as it was. It, th this feels just like that because it is a really, really feel good story in in a lot of different places. Because you know the 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 the, the, bo the cat Bob is is so adorable. Let's speak I, about the cat first. No, no. And about no, please, why no. you might prefer this film over films about dogs or or, fish. or, or people, for instance. Yeah, the cat guy. We went to Amsterdam over the summer. Oh, this is so exciting. Uh, I think I've already said this on our show with Hafster, uh, actually. I think, I think you've already been outed about this, but um, we were in a... Outed. Yeah, we were, we were in a gift shop. I went past this gift shop. Uh, I, I this saw, is not true, by the way. It is. This is twisted. Shall I dip his mic so he hasn't got a yeah, chance yeah. to respond? Oh, it's gone. Um, so we were in a gift shop. I saw some Ajax football shirts that I quite fancy the look of. So I'll go and see how much they are. 
might be a nice little souvenir for the trip. Went in, saw there were like 50 euros and thought, nah, forget it, I'm not going to bother with that. So we all come out, and then we look in, and Ryan's still there. Ryan's just like staying in the shop. And because they've got this cat, and he's probably getting close to it and going, mm, probably kissing it and licking it and sniffing it. <laughs> and uh, he, to the, you know, he's still to this day, it doesn't, uh, won't accept it. It, it. it would be fine if you just accepted it. There was but, like seven witnesses, man. But we all saw it. We all yeah. saw it. Yeah. You're back in the room. What actually happened was... I was... <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I was nuzzling the cat. Oh, yeah, it wasn't man. your cat, like, though, You know, that, like, everybody nuzzles their pets. No, yeah, but it wasn't, yeah, yeah, but it wasn't it your... It reached up to kiss us, and I, I nuzzled it with me no, nose. No, it didn't. It was I, just... didn't I didn't kiss or sniff it. I didn't... I nuzzled it. It was I... sitting there docile. I didn't kiss on a, it on or a sniff yeah, it. it didn't, like you're yeah. making out. It wasn't... It didn't, le- it didn't reach up to kiss <laughs> you. It's awful it crack. Just... Like, I don't know where to look. No, me neither. Didn't know where to look. Oh, wow. It was awkward. So, yeah, well... <laughs> I was I was using that to talk about Bob really, uh, cute cat basically. Stay away from Ryan, Bob. Fair enough. Uh, well, there you go. But um, it's based on uh, James Bond's best-selling memoirs. He's got nine books about him and Bob. And I mean, what? What? Yeah, he's got nine books. Gee, whoa. Yeah. Nine books. Was that I mean? I think there's an animated series coming out soon as well. Yeah. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Well, there you go. Animated series. I mean, that could be like um, the on- there's already a successful online series about cats, isn't there? The animations. Is there? Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember what they're called, but they're cute. Anyway, but um, yeah, so this um, has been one yeah. hell of a <laughs> shoddy review. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, to be honest, you know, it's a family film that has real serious things to say about about serious problems. I think because <sighs> it, it is a very awkward tone because it is a family film and it, it's pitched as a comedy drama. However, it, it gets really dark at times. Like, obviously, um, James Bourne is a he was a recovering heroin addict, and there are scenes later in the film when he goes cold turkey and comes off the methadone, and it's it's really sort of recream for a dreamish because it's recream for, for a dream. Yeah, like it, <laughs> it's, it's a good few minutes of him struggling badly to get off the methadone. And I, d- I do think it is pronounced requiem. Oh, not requiem. Requ- requiem. <laughs> requiem. Okay, I'm sorry, but um, it's really bad. Like it's it's really uncomfortable to watch, and I can't I keep asking myself, is this a family film? And it's it's really bleak in that aspect. But I mean, I, I, it has got awkward tones in that, and I think the balance between the humour and the seriousness was quite awkward. But I thought it was just so sincere. You know, like <sighs> it had a real heart at the edge of it. And like Anthony Head playing as a strange dad is a really strong role. Is he? You know, I think then. Um, no, I, I think. Well, why? Come on. I didn't think yeah. so. I didn't think so. Um, I, I get what you mean about that scene at the end being a bit like Requiem for a Dream, but uh, yeah. classic, classic, yeah, uh, that famous classic film, film by yeah. Darien Havarsky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was a missed opportunity. I mean, I, when you think about what it is, it's a twelve A family film about a heroin addict, which it's it's a really yeah. peculiar thing to do. But I think it balances it completely wrong. I think the the most interesting part is the start of the film when you kind of get to know James and Bob, and I suppose their neighbour as well, Betty. Uh, but really, it, from from that point, once you've got to know them, it just it, it 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 can't decide what it wants to do, what it wants to be. I think the best bit about it is Bob, which I mean, if if a cat is the best thing about a film, you you've really got trouble. It I think that Bob was filmed in quite an interesting way. A lot of the time, he's used to sort of cut like to a reaction. Like they, they use Bob as if he's a real person. Like his his reaction is just as I important. I think that gives it a lot of strength. That 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 gives it some strength. I like that. Even if it turns out Bob was played by multiple different cats. Yeah. If you look at the credits, there's like nine but, cats but, but listed. Uh, eh, but, but, you've had you say. Uh, poorly paced. Cliches is an understatement. Uh, it, it crams as many as it can by the end. It, it's it's such a overdone bit of cliche drama towards the end. It it just it, it seems rushed at the very end. Like just pile on some misery and then oh look he's happy again. He's he's fine. It's it's destined for Christmas on BBC One. It's destined to be on at about eight o'clock on Boxing Day, isn't it? Like sort of the, the David Williams slot that he's sort of coined. It someday it'll be there. Um, but it, it it fails to make a point about homelessness. It's just it's just about him. I, I, I think I, th- I think it really struggles. But isn't that to... the point? Like, no, it, it's, but it's, it's a man no, and his story yeah, about him and his cat. Yeah, and I think it it sort of does it. It does a, a fairly okay job at that. But if it, if it's if it's the intention to make a film that's sort of more inclusive of, of making a point of some issues it doesn't really do that at all and i wasn't really that mm. heartwarmed by it i was kind of like oh you know great well done obviously it's fantastic that you, you succeeded and i'm never going to take that away from anybody it's such a hard thing to do but the film i think could have done better i think the film it, it does a poor bit of justice to a man who's obviously overcome so much yeah i was disappointed i, I, I think the, the the pov stuff from bob's point of view is what what why? Yeah, I, I, I like I, I like why people might I like to use hands. him as a character, but I think how the camera in his head is just often just too much, laid on too I think, thick. 
I, I just think I, I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree on this because I think I think the the relationship between him and his next door neighbor, soon to be girlfriend Ruta Gedmundas, is is sort of. It, it's just yeah. like the relationship he has in them and, and Anthony Head is dad and just the fact that he never seems to get a break and then it's this cat that, that gives him the strength to I to do, sort of, I, I do to love it when uh, when she goes off on one because, because he's uh, yeah because like if, if, if he's a, not a vegan and she's like oh I'm a vegan like oh d- don't like me and she's just she's just, just a very clum- yeah. clumsily written character I thought unless she really is like that and then if that is the case then damn I just, I just think it was a, <laughs> it's a family film with a real warmth to it and I, I really uh, enjoyed that because I really, I really got quite emotional by the end. I won't lie. I've, it's the cat, I've, isn't it? No, maybe. it is the cat. It's the cat. <laughs> but it's, it's the, 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 the cat. relationship it's the cat. between them it's two. The if it was a dog, if it was a cat, if it was a cat, it's the cat. It's the cat. It's the cat. I've never heard more awes in a cinema. Ever. It's the cat. If it right. Was, if it was a dog, you wouldn't like. It was an adorable film, and it's. I think. I think it's. It's the cat. So, street cat named Bob. Recommend Ryan. Yes, it's got some real things to see in a family film, and I love it. I'm not a cat person. Yeah, I think well, you're not an anything person. You, you, you wouldn't be that I like, I like raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> a street raccoon named Bob. A street raccoon, raccoon named Bob. No, Do- if if I could have a pet raccoon, I'd have a pet raccoon. Aren't they a bit like violent? Isn't the scratch? No, no, stuff? you can train them. Can you? And they've got raccoons. Like, the, and they've got like they've got cute little hands on the hands of things. <laughs> yeah, but monkeys <laughs> do that. Well, I don't want a monkey. I want a raccoon. So. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that. Well, that's in cinemas now. If you fancy it, uh, and yeah. if you like cats, not a street cat named raccoon. No, a street, a street raccoon <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, no. Street cat named raccoon. <laughs> Should we just play some local music and, play play some and pretend music. this hasn't happened? <laughs> a street cat named raccoon. What, what, what happened to this show? What's his favourite <laughs> film? Raccoon for a dream? Is that, is that his favourite film? <laughs> <laughs> right uh, then. Moving on.